here we are, episode 17. And this will be a little bit different because I'm not gonna feature that much new on the ship because I've turned my focus to the first blueprint and I'll be dealing with the construction of masts and the shaping and design of yards. And there'll be a little work on some of the pulleys and the rigging that direction, but just a beginning level. Again, won't feature that much on the ship itself, but it will feature on my making the masts. Not that I'm that great at it, but I was able to get through it. So let's get started. If you recall, I said I was going to do some more research on this area right here because I know this supports the anchor. There's not a lot of information in the instructions on how to make this. I did notice that there is a little groove cut out here and on the actual piece that's not done so you'll need to do that yourself if you want to have it in there and what this actually is is called a cat head from what I can determine and there's really some work you'll need to do to it so here is an example of what you could do and what I'm trying to achieve or at least come close to here is my anchor I've added these straps on here. The instruction book didn't show anything like that, but I like the look of that on this. I'm making this. I happen to have uh, something very similar, a pulley that has the three lines. And then I just added the hook and I made that myself. And I would recommend, I have a new tool this is called round nose pliers and you can take brass wire and you can make those loops up in the top. Sometimes that's a little hard to do with a regular pair of needle nose pliers, but you can see I got a very nice round top on it. I'm working on the hook a little bit. I want to improve that some. And here's where I've gotten. Back here, there's a little pin that shows it up in this drawing a little bit better. So that's what I've done here. Now I'm going to clip these off and I just put a brass wire across there to simulate this. I'm not going to have the individual uh, openings because when I get the rope in there, it's going to hide all that anyway. So you're not going to be able to see. Here's what you're going to achieve. And this is a pulley system to actually hold the weight of the anchor then this I think is to loop around so I'll cut these shorter and let me show you approximately where this goes on the ship when finished okay here's where I sanded off that part that's going to catch that rail and then this will set approximately like that the hook will grab the upper rope of the anchor you're going to come from an eye bolt that is on the deck of the ship loop around the anchor and then tie it off to one of the rails. Then the pulley that lifts the weight of the anchor up then goes to a cleat somewhere on the ship. And there's a suggestion because the anchor will actually rest against the the uh, hull so you may want to chafe where that would rest. I'll wait and decide if I want to do that later. Here's my initial finished product. I really don't have it attached. You can see the pulley's in place and the anchor is in place temporarily anyway. So I think that is pretty much how that's supposed to look. I've got the other one on the other side. I just haven't hooked up the anchor yet. So, so that's my concept of how the cat heads should be attached. You could do more rope work and some fine, you know, real minute fine work. But for the ship, I think I'm going to leave it at that point right there. I'm in the process of building masts and I remembered this section in the book because the mast construction is a whole different set of plans and their blueprints, whereas this is in the, the manual. And this piece does not come pre-drilled so it says drill holes for these ropes to go through so before you build the mast I'm going to drill all those holes if I haven't already mentioned that 
I'm very happy with this wind drill press table. I set this fence up so now I can be assured that I'm getting this hole exactly in the same spot on each side. You won't find anything about the bow sprit in the manual. That's because it's in the uh, kind of the blueprints for all the sails and rigging. To start with, I've laid them out on the hood of my car and eventually I'll post them up. The kit comes with adequate timbers for all the masts and those types of things. I just happen to have some that are the same diameter that are made out of oak. So I'm going to go ahead and use them for some of them. The first one that I want to start working on is the bow sprit. And how this works on this blueprint, it's marked P4, and then you go on the diagram and find P4, and you can find the actual length, which is 260 millimeters. And it tapers down to five millimeters from the beginning at eight millimeters. And that does not include what goes in the ship. So there's a little more that goes inside the ship. So I'll walk through how I do this on just this one section of the main mast. And that's the only one I'll cover, but it'll work for all of them. So they provide measurements in the blueprints here. And it shows the main mast being 230 millimeters. However, that does not include what goes down into the ship. So I measured that depth and it's 11 millimeters. So at first I need to taper this down to get to the 10 millimeters. Then once I get that, the rest of it gradually tapers down to six millimeters at the top. Right now, it's at about a little over maybe 11 millimeters. So it's not that much that I need to take off. This is the top of the mast and this is the, the bottom section, the thicker part. I've gotten the tip down to the diameter that I need, and that's because I know this part F24 fits right on there. So I need to taper from this point to the, uh, the thicker part. So this all needs to taper down to this point. I use a multitude of different tools to do that. Now you're not necessarily gonna have to use oak and this size, but I use this little tool with a diamond blade. So this is rotating and this is rotating, and I'll just work this up and down. I also use an orbital sander. I use bits of sandpaper, and as I started out, I use a file. When I get close to where I wanna be, then I'll use different grades of sandpaper. I'm finishing up with the front mast or forward mast and I'm up here to the top and this connector for the very top section lists that top piece and there's two of them always at the tops that join the, the two together list F28 however I believe that's a printing error because down further and over on the uh, the main mast, the center mast, I've already used F28 and it's a lot larger piece than what was up in the upper sections. Unfortunately, I did not keep track of this piece. It is the last one on sheet F. I finished the masts. Now I'm working on the yards and there's a little uh, area that I want to be more specific on and it's right here. And as this tapers down from, well, this particular one tapers down from four millimeters down to three. And then there's a little piece at the end that goes down to 2.5. Almost looks like it would be a handle on a, uh, an oar. So I figured out an easier way to get that taken down in a more consistent fashion. So let me show you how I... I've uh, done that. I started out doing them by hand with a small file and it was a pain and I wasn't consistent. So what I've done is I've taken this miniature belt sander and then I just rotate this in my hand 
and it's working out very well. So let me make just one to show you. And that gives me the effect that I want on both ends. This is one of the larger yards and it's 240 millimeters. So what I've done is I've taken this oak uh, dowel rod, given myself some generous space on the ends, and that's gonna allow me to really tighten this down. I was having trouble, once I tapered one end down and turned it around, the taper would slip out of this eventually, and it was also going to damage it. So this way I can taper it down and then cut them off and not worry about the damage here. If you look closely, this is not the same yard. I measured the wrong one, so I will use that one for another part. So this is the one that's 240 millimeters. I've got it uh, tapered down how I want it to my satisfaction. Now I just cut off the two ends. This is where I use the miniature sand belt to get that little handle looking piece on the edge. That's the look that I want. Then I've been marking each one with a post-it note. This one is P51. And then I'm just storing them over here on this bench. So I have the yards all cut and stained and ready to go. I'll let them dry for about 24 hours. I think I had showed on camera before the rope work that comes with it. The, the two thicker ones are fine. You can probably separate those pretty easily. However, the thin thread, the thinnest, uh, it's very difficult not to get it tangled up. So this is what I've done, is I put it on a stick and now I'm able to take this and unloop it. And after I unloop about 10 times, then I have a piece of PVC pipe, very thin, so now I'm slowly winding this onto this spool. And believe it or not, I've got it all on here except for this last little bit kind of tangled up. And I've just kind of taken it off of the stick and jiggled it and I've been able to get it pretty much untangled and that proves that it can be done. I wanted to get back and clarify the tarred twine that I ordered and how well it's going to or not going to work with this particular ship. The thickest is two millimeters that's a little heavy for this ship in my opinion. Number 15 is 1.5 millimeters that's a possibility, as is the 1.5 millimeter, which is the number 12. But the one that I actually will use for sure is the number 9. It's 1 millimeter. It's just two hundredths larger than what came with the ship. So this is what came with the ship. It's 0.08 millimeters, and there's very little difference. Hobby Lobby sells this product. That's HL number three eight seven four six four it is very similar to the middle sized rope that comes with the ship they're both listed as being five millimeters but the Hobby Lobby one visually looks a little smaller so I actually measured them and the one that comes with the ship is 0.6 millimeters so I'll stick with what came with the ship but this could also be used as a backup and then the tiniest rope that comes with the ship is 0.2 millimeters, and I will go ahead and use that. That's the update on the tarred twine, and if you have any interest in it, that gives you an idea of what the size actually is. This concludes episode 17, Making Good Progress. I appreciate everyone watching, appreciate the comments, and 
helpful hints that I've gotten along the way, and I'm happy to try and answer questions if you're joining me on this bit.